Hey guys and gals, it's Dream Crusher back again for another Murder Mystery Monday. I know I've been MIA lately, a girl's been going through some things, but I'm back and better than ever. So today I will be playing Dead by Daylight, and then I will be discussing another American serial killer by the name of Dean Coral. I think that is how you pronounce his last name. I'm also horrible at pronouncing names, but his last name is spelled C-O-R-L-L. So if you look it up and I'm pronouncing it wrong, oh the fuck well. So Dean Arnold Coral, and if you're wondering where I'm getting that pronunciation from, I love The Walking Dead and Rick Grimes always pron- <laughs> pronounces his son's name. Instead of Carl, he calls him Coral. So I know it's off topic, but that is where I'm getting that pronunciation from. So like I said, Dean Arnold Coral was born on December 24th, 1939 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He was the first child of Arnold Edwin Coral and Mary Robinson. Dean's parents had frequent arguments, so they divorced whenever he was about seven years of age. But that same year, he was diagnosed with rheumatic fever and had to renounce physical education. The combined effect of growing up in a broken home with medical difficulties made him a shy boy who rarely socialized with other children, which as we all know, that is a recipe for disaster. So after the divorce, Dean's mother opened up her own candy business and made Dean the vice president. That same year, one of Dean's mother's teenage male employees complained about Dean making sexual advances toward him, but instead of just you know, addressing the issue, she simply fired the boy. So it's already given him a sense of, okay, I don't have to be held accountable for my actions at this point because my mother's going to take care of it. So that is just setting this man up for just future assaults and endeavors that he should not be doing. So moving on. A year later, Dean was drafted into the U.S. Army and was assigned to Fort Polk, Louisiana for a 10-month training. There, Dean realized that he was gay, which obviously, I mean, if he's making sexual advances at, you know, young male employees of his mother's, he obviously has some feelings there, which there's nothing wrong with. Live your life. Love who you love. And... He then had his first sexual encounter. So he then realized like, okay, I like guys. That's cool. Live your best life. However, after being honorably discharged, he returned to work in his mother's company and made advances toward other male employees. See, and then that is where he's fucking up. There's nothing wrong with being gay love who you love but whether it's male or woman you cannot be sitting there you know making sexual advances at employees it's called sexual harassment obviously he doesn't know shit about that because he continues to do so and then his mother keeps on covering his ass so in 1967 Dean met 12 year old David Owen Brooks and the two became close friends that's weird The fact that he became friends with a 12-year-old, but I digress. They would go on trips together. Brooks admired Dean to the point of considering him a substitute father. However, the relationship took a darker turn beginning in 1969 when Dean paid Brooks to perform oral sex on him. See, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. I feel like People like Dean Coral are predators. They go after individuals who maybe had rough upbringings and are looking for something that he can provide, which in this case, with this 12-year-old, a substitute father, but he was really grooming him to have that sexual relationship that he's been trying to live out. So now... He has this young boy who admires him and who probably feels like he's not doing anything wrong because Dean cares about him in a fatherly type of way. Whereas Dean is more trying to convince this young boy to 
trust him enough to have that sort of sexual relationship. So, moving on to the Houston mass murders. So, Dean's first known victim was a young boy by the name of Jeffrey Cohen, a student at the University of Texas in Austin, whom he abducted while hitchhiking on September 25th, 1970. Cohen's body was later buried in the High Islands Beach area. So he waited for quite some time before he started doing murders. He's not like a lot of the other serial killers that I've read about where they kind of started killing right away he kind of had a build-up so first he started with the sexual harassment then he started with you know his first consensual gay encounter well at least we think it was consensual we don't know but i'm assuming it was consensual um then to him grooming a young boy to receive sexual favors now he's transitioned to murder so around the time of cohen's murder brooks actually interrupted dean in the act of raping two teenage boys whom he strapped to a torture board dean then promised brooks a car in return for his silence and brooks accepted that offer and then shortly after murdering the boys that you know dean was raping dean bought Brooks a green Chevrolet Corvette. So he's basically bribing this boy for his silence because he knew that he raped these kids and then he had to get rid of them. So basically Brooks knows way too much. So he wants to keep Brooks as happy as possible. Later, Dean offered $200 to Brooks for any boy that he could lure to his apartment. So he's now including him in on the crimes, basically making him an accessory to any crime he commits going forward. So Brooks is fucked, basically. On December 13th, Brooks lured two boys away from a religious rally and Dean then proceeded to rape and kill the boys. And then on January 30th, 1971, Dean and Brooks encountered two boys walking home. So this is on a completely separate date. The boys were lured to Dean's van and driven to his apartment where they raped and killed the two boys. So Brooks has now transitioned from victim to predator. He is basically assisting Dean now in these heinous crimes because Dean got Brooks from a young age and groomed him and turned him into basically his little fucking helper. So after they raped and killed the boys, their bodies were then buried in a boat shed um, that Dean owned. So he basically had a little hideaway where he hid the bodies. And then between March and May, Dean abducted and killed three more victims with Brooks's help. So Dean is now ha- not having to do this alone. He now has his little handy helper called Brooks luring these boys into his home where he proceeds to rape and kill them. Um, on August 17th, Brooks and Dean encounter an acquaintance of Brooks named Reuben Hanley. Hanley? I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Hanley. Walking home from a movie theater, Dean obviously wanted to take advantage of this, so he took Hanley to his home and strangled him to death. In the winter of 1971, Brooks lured Elmer Wayne Hanley as a new victim. Um, For reasons unknown, Dean spared him and offer Hanley the same fee of $200 for any boy he could lure to his apartment. So he basically gave him the same deal as Brooks and, you know, didn't kill him and said, you know, hey, I will throw you $200 for any boy that you lure to my place. And told Hanley that he was a member of a slavery ring 
which is crazy in itself, but Hanley ignored Dean's offer for several months, but then finally accepted it in early 1972. So something changed as far as Hanley's financial circumstances or whatever the situation is, but he then officially accepted the offer from Dean and proceeded to start bringing boys to Dean's apartment for him to rape and kill. So the murder spree continued until about August 7th, 1973. So what may be slightly two years, but that all came to an end when Henley actually killed Dean. So basically what happened was Henley invited a few friends to Dean's house. You know, he invited two boys, which, you know, Dean was excited about. However, he also invited a girl. So Dean was not happy that the girl was there. So then he proceeded to drug all of the teenagers, including Henley. And then Henley awoke to find himself, you know, tied to that basically torture bit that Dean would attach his victim, attach his victims to. So Dean eventually removed the gag from Henley's mouth and basically he pled his case saying that, you know, he was sorry, blah, blah, blah. But Dean wasn't having it. He said he was going to kill them all. So eventually Henley convinced Dean to untie him and Dean was going to rape the one young guy that was there and then kill everybody else. So somehow Henley got the pistol, got a pistol that Dean had and Henley ended up shooting Dean and killing him. So that's pretty much how it all came to an end. He ended up killing Dean and they end up calling the police. And of course, you know, Henley was arrested for murder. Um, but once in custody, Henley confessed to Brooks and his own involvement in Dean's murders and revealed the locations of some of the bodies that were buried. Um, to this day, they don't know the total number of Dean's victims um, because basically, you know, after a while, bones get scattered. Sometimes they don't have the full skeleton, so they can't say for certain if this bone belongs to one individual or another. So they believe the victim count was somewhere around 29. Um, but like I said, they don't know for sure. So after his arrest, Henley was later indicted and found guilty of six murders. Um, Brooks, who attempted to portray himself as like a silent partner of Dean and Henley's, who was not present present at any of the rapes and murders, was indicted for four murders, but found guilty of one. Both accomplices were sentenced to life in prison because they both played a hand in the crimes. Because let's be honest, Dean most likely wouldn't have had as many victims as he did have if they were not bringing boys to him. So they definitely played a huge part in the amount of people that Dean assaulted. So Henley actually is currently still incarcerated um, at a prison in Anderson County, Texas, while Brooks was actually incarcerated um, at a different facility, but then later died on May 28th, 2020 from COVID at the age of 65. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. But all right, guys and gals, thank you for tuning in for another Murder Mystery Monday. I really miss doing these, and I promise I will stay consistent with my content. Like I said, a girl was going through some things over the last couple of weeks, so I needed a little break. But I will be back again next Monday for another serial killer. Once again, I have no idea who I'm going to review, but you will find out on Monday. All right, see you next time. Bye.